Welcome back to the Ticket Setup Series. And in today's session, we're going to continue the process of working with our new hire lifecycle. We're actually going to start using it from the, the end user side and the, the agent side. So up to this point, we've created a lifecycle with a few phases, an approval phase and an account provisioning phase. We've now associated that lifecycle to a template, which has made it available to all of our end user experiences. Um, as well as our agent experiences. And now we're going to have an end user and agent actually use that new life cycle that we created. Uh, so in the first scenario here, we're going to actually initiate a new hire process from the end user experience. So Adele is going to kick off a new hire process and we're going to see how that flows through the system. And then we'll do it from the agent side. So I'll jump over to Adele's perspective and I'll bring teams up for both Diego and Adele so we can see how that feels as it's traveling through the system. So Adele is going to initiate a new hire process. Um, need to hire an employee. And that's going to search our service catalog and it's going to bring back our new hire service request form. And here we're going to fill out the details um, for Sean here. And we're going to choose a start date. And then we'll go ahead and submit that out. Now, when this new hire process is created, now there's a bunch of business properties that are sitting around um, this ticket uh, and there's a life cycle now associated with it and we're going to start to see the elements of that life cycle start to pop up throughout throughout the experience here so this life cycle has multiple phases and phase one had some approvers now just to containerize the setup we made both adele and diego an approver of this new hire so you'll see here that Adele in Ticket Virtual Agent was sent an approval request for ticket number 15, which was that new hire. She's also a requester, she was, so she was made aware that an approval was added uh, for that new hire. And that's what Adele is experiencing on her side as an end user. And typically the end user won't be the approver, so they won't get a double notification. But again, just to visualize what's happening, we wanted to show uh, the different steps of this approval. And we also made uh, Diego um, an approver of this new hire as well. But before we show that, let's, let's talk about that ticket. So ticket 15 was created and you'll see here that there is an approval that's waiting to be actioned here. And we're currently sitting in the approval phase. And Diego, at least within Teams, has been sent also a notification in Ticket Virtual Agent asking him to approve um, this new hire. And he has the ability to approve that new hire from here as well. So if I go ahead and approve that, what you'll see happen here is he'll get a visual verification that's been approved. Adele will also get a visual verification that's been approved. And then we're going to move this new hire process forward to the next phase, which is the go um, provision some accounts phase. Now, Diego is basically assigned to everything. So he's getting a lot of notifications and typically activities and approvals are spread across departments and spread across responsibilities. Um, but if I go over to the ticket app, what you'll see here is that Diego has been sent some tasks. Um, one of those tasks is to provide Teams access and one of the other tasks is to create that account. Now he can action those here in Teams if he wants, um, but I'm actually going to pivot up to the web so we could take a look at this lifecycle and the web experience and show how Diego could also action this life cycle um, for this new hire process in the web. So if I go back over to the ticket agent portal and I go over to my ticket list, I'll see a, a few new hires that have been created, but specifically ticket number 15 is the one that we're gonna focus on here. And you'll see here ticket 15 was uh, created by Adele. It's our service request, it's for a new hire. So there's something new visually here and that something new that's visual is that this ticket has that life cycle the new hire um, and it's currently sitting in the account provisioning phase because it has been approved now if i click, click on ticket 15 um, i can see here that <clears throat> i'm sitting in my new hire and i'm currently sitting in uh, phase two phase one was completed because diego approved that and now we're sitting in phase two which is provisioning those accounts um, I also have that custom form that's available to me visually in Teams, um, as well as in the web here. And I can see all the information is traveling with this, this life cycle as we're working through this business process here. Now I can 
as Diego as well action this um, inside of the web. So I didn't do it in Teams, but I wanted to show it to you in the web in a couple different ways. So the first way I want to show you is actually on a ticket. So if I were to come over here and just complete that task, so say I created that account, I'll update that and that will move that particular task to the completed phase. That's one way I can do it. Um, the other way that I can be aware of it, of this task or these tasks and, and perform actions against them is in the my work or my group work view. So we touched on this in a previous setup series presentation, um, but my work is a list of all tickets, tasks, and approvals assigned directly to Diego. Um, and you'll see here, I have all my things that are assigned to me and I can filter my tickets and my tasks. And we see ticket 15 has that task for providing Teams access waiting for me. Um, but also just to highlight it, uh, my group work is a list of all tickets assigned to me and my associated support group and my tasks and approvals. So you'll see as an example, ticket 13 is assigned to the service desk group, but not assigned to anyone in particular but I still get visibility to that ticket because I'm a member of that group. Now, that task is also sitting here in my group work here. Um, and I can click on ticket 15, which will take me to the, um, the ticket, the life cycle directly into that phase. And then I can uh, complete that task here. Now, once that's completed, um, I can move that life cycle forward. And you'll see here that the life cycle goes to um, a resolve state and that the status for that phase is now completed because the life cycle has been moved from, from into a closure state. Uh, now this is how um, an end user could initiate this new hire service request out of our service catalog um, and allow for us to use a life cycle to, to control the governance of my new hire um, across those different phases. On the other side, you may want an agent to be able to do this as well. And agents can also apply this template with this life cycle and be able to kick off new hires as well. So in a previous setup session, we talked about how an agent can apply templates um, to a new ticket or an existing ticket. So I won't go too detailed there, um, but what I do wanna show is what the end result of that looks like. So if I go to the tickets list here and I click add ticket, um, I'm gonna have my apply template um, option here. So let's say I want to create a new hire um, process or initiate one, excuse me. I'll select my new hire here. Um, you'll see my life cycle is going to be associated with that and I'll click next here. Um, and then I can, as mentioned in that previous setup session, send this form to the requester or answer the form now or after it's created. I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll just fill out the required information that wasn't provided to me in the template. So new hire for Sean. Ashton, my requester will be, actually I'll make my requester Diego, so I'm the one that's creating it. Um, and you'll see the properties of that template are filled out here. So type, category, priority, and then I'll go ahead and create um, that ticket. And just like in the end user experience, ticket 16 is created. Um, and we see here that all the properties are set from the template, but we also have that lifecycle attached to it and we're sitting in that first phase, which is the approval phase. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the uh, video for now. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time and looking forward to seeing you on the next one.